best we can uh, to what we think is his walls. Mm -hmm. So once we get that pit down, we're going to go into the wall and, and find the old wall, you know? They didn't use plastic in those days. They didn't use plastic or, or anything, but I, I tell you, it's just remarkable. We, we did 25 centimeter interval topo points to, to actually do the topography of his old pits, because anything we do now is going to mess it up a little bit, you know? So, his 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 report with the old the map I I probably have seen those in the past, but I don't recall. Well, I, I, yeah, okay. This is what I want to this is what I want to show you. That's good. What what we're doing? This is all. Sky is doing her dissertation on the uh, on the on the spot fine screen fish ecology abrupt climate change, anything we can do, right? Yep, yep. But we're just daydreaming about what this thing could mean. One thing is, this is the outlet of the, the, the biggest uh, wetland on the entire peninsula, right there. And if you look on the bottom profiles, uh, the stream was on this side. I mean, the, this is the deepest the channels over here. Yeah. So I assume that so they were in the late archaic period, this was the mouth of the stream. But it's still a fair distance back, you know. In other words, for, they, for a late archaic site, this is the way back part of it. Okay. Yep. Now, what we're seeing is, and, and we're, we're doing his back dirt, and we got one of two things. One is gravel. Uh, we got lots of gravel, but lots of gravel everywhere. So uh -huh. w thus far, we don't have any basis. W when we take column samples, we'll have something to evaluate to see if we're getting a gravel floor, hopefully. Um, but I, I tell you, there's a lot of gravel here, so I don't know what we'll be able to distinguish. Um, but the... Uh, uh, here, thus far, he says, the vast majority of the bone came out of the moorhead phase right here. Lower okay. yeah. The upper ceramic period unit didn't produce much. All right. He also says this whole thing is backfill from road work. Okay. That's nice. And but it's full of shell. It's in other words, this whole the thing. The site was over it. there, and they yes. chopped it and moved it. Yes. Oh. So, wow. And, again, even throughout all of that, there's not much bone. Now, we're not finding much bone, and it may be either because he was incredibly thorough, or we're in his sample where there's not much bone. Now, when I say that, every bucket full, we get about five swordfish ribs. Oh, okay. fantastic. So, low density means uh, little baggies full of stuff, but compared to Machias and other showmans, it's low density. But we're getting, uh, but you are getting sword regular swordfish in this upper part, okay? But with pottery and everything else, because yeah. it's his back dirt. So, uh, uh, and out on the bank, we're getting big chunks of swordfish. Yeah, that, right? the swordfish sword fragment. Yeah, that'll like this. <laughs> is that uh, Alice, by the way? Somebody just pulled in in a bowl, though. That's her uh, husband, isn't Alice it? Alice is supposed to be down today, yeah. so it may be. We went up to visit her. So, I would say, you know, about half the bone we're getting is swordfish. Jesus, Brian. Excuse you know my English. So the question is, what is this way back? Oh, you know, you know my interest, right? I yeah. like symbolic faunal stuff. I like what's going on. You know, what are these things? Why are they right? checking the swordfish out in the back of the midden? Yeah. Why big chunks of sword? Uh, what you know? And is this gravel thing? Is it just a big midden, or is it something way in the back part of the site? Now I'll show you what we're looking at, and this is this was the scheme, okay? Let's, let's, where's that profile? Oh, the profile's right yeah. there, yeah. All right, now, this here is the shell-free gravel and bone, and that's where all the bone's coming out, right? This right here, below that, is whole and large broken shell. Oh, geez. Okay. So what I'm looking at is this is the only we're gonna we're gonna go and we're taking out this. Yeah. Because we want columns through what should be moorhead phase shell, which is this and this. Yeah. This is not shell at all. It's it's just a uh, a gravelly brown loam with not much in it. 
and then this is the ceramic period, Shellman, okay? So the question is here, could we be at the edge of a house pit? House pit. Um, and if so, can we tell whether it was dug into it, or could we have a donut way in the back of the site? You know, there's all these possibilities, right? Oh, God, Now, yes. so we've been just talking about this. What if we had, uh, um, you know, if, if we've got a piece of this left, and we can actually finally, finally have an archaic house floor, then it's worth a whole lot in the future, right? Then so we this have is to deal with a bank. That's a problem. Yeah. As you can see here, we're carefully avoiding any further erosion, and we'll go down on the bank. But, but uh, uh, I don't. There's not any easy erosion control no, on this site. You'd have to you'd have to go out ten foot of boulders and yep. start It'd back. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. To, so to control this. So. As soon as we interrupt the bank, um, we're making things worse. Yep. So what we've got, I figure, is is uh, this part inward. Now, I, I left off the other two. I rejected this so I could large it. There's two other units over here, and they go right through. The, this, this actually gets thicker. Interestingly, this is the back wall. It's rows. Uh, when you match up Rose's units, they actually match up. It's pretty good. <laughs> he was it's amazing. He was amazing. He yeah. was good. He was, you know. So so uh, so this wall, this corner matches right here. I see. And you can see the the stuff is the 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 gravel with bone is getting thicker towards the back. Okay. So there still is good potential here. And maybe under the road too, huh? And maybe under the road. Oh my God. Okay. Now. Obviously, here comes somebody. Without like major. Oh, is that Alice? Oh. No, that's that's uh, not one. Of, that's not one of the Wellmans. No. What's the uh, Wellman Senior's Wellman name? In the back of Valley. Oh. Okay. He's, they're the present owners of that house. Okay. And they've owned it since the 60s. I see. Everybody here knows everybody, and it's a lot of fun because they all have stories about everybody. It's it's just <laughs> it's amazing, you know. They all know about the site. They just uh, and and they. It's, it's really something. Uh, Willie Rowe came by. Um, he's a nephew. And of course, John only died. This is not like dealing with Moorhead. Right, it was like four or year, five years five, ago. Four or five years yeah. ago. So, you know, there's, his contemporaries are everywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're his contemporaries. We just, I just didn't, never met him. So, uh, but it's just very different than what I'm used to with my other studies, you know? So, but still, this is 73 years old. That's amazing, Brian. I, when you, sh when you, sh showed when you put that site plan together and said you could find the, the, the holes on the ground I went oh my god well How did... what I, what I can't tell and I think you had my map in the front here yeah it's on the back flip side of one of those pieces of paper yeah there it is there yeah. now when I this is right here and what I scheduled and I think it's just because we did this quickly with a tape but actually this line goes right up through here and cuts off this corner you can yeah. see it you it's absolutely perfect right here when you just look at the eroded areas you can see it from the bank there's the big trench yeah then you've got an undisturbed corner that's an undisturbed pit and then it drops down into yes. this pit it so it's, his it's all his pit. it's like nothing has touched it you know so again we, we made a really thorough map of the whole thing down to the beach uh, because we can't help but mess it up a little bit but we're going to leave it as much as we can like it is you know uh, and and we have uh, rebar in now so uh, uh, yep. we have our, our new grid system established you know and the plaque is underneath your transit more or less uh, a pretty actually it's this side of the front leg Okay. It was completely buried. We had to find it. You know, it's amazing. It's like 1999 and yeah. it's gone, you know. Yeah. It was covered with, with lobster claws. It, it, was <laughs> it was one lobster somebody had thrown out there. So, yeah, so there's the, the plaque. Yeah. And we set a datum of 150 
above. See the, the blue mm -hmm. That's enough. The blue flag in the big tree. Yep. That's 150. Not tons. We kept a bucket of uh, stuff that fell through the quarter inch from this mm -hmm. set. So we'll see what we get in there. Going out and coming and harpooning. This is our, we're testing our uh, washing method. We did a one bag of stuff that we screened before we washed it, and then we washed it and have a separate bag. We're going to see how big of a difference it really makes. So as you can see, there's not a lot of it so this is your thesis? This will be my this will be part of my dissertation. So if you had to if you had to tell somebody in, in a, who was a, a lay person, mm -hmm. how would you describe it? <laughs> I would say that what we're looking at is we have a record of fish species over through time, and we are trying to um, use that record to see whether there have been changes in fish species over time, because the, there's a lot of um, swordfish from before 4,000 years ago, and swordfish is more of a Gulf Stream warm water species. So we're trying to see if there were other warm water species here at the same time to see if the, the Gulf of Maine had more of a Gulf Stream influence. Because now there's actually this this weekend in Portland a conference going on of fisheries people because they're seeing warming in the Gulf and they're seeing new species. So we're trying to get some idea of what a past period of warmer Gulf of Ma uh, Gulf of Maine would have looked like, so that we can have some idea of what we might expect to see in the years to come if it does warm. Wow, which we think should be valuable for fisheries. Could be very valuable. So that's our goal. <laughs> Thank you. Know, and these are like these are our bleeding them. Yeah. But, it, but are there swordfish here in these waters now? There's no. out in the out in Georgia's banks, okay. way out, hundred miles out. Okay. You can fish for them, but here. So what's the theory as to why they were here four thousand years warmer ago? Warmer water, warmer surface water in the summer. Warmer water. Yeah. The tidal amplitude was lower. There was less tidal mixing. Okay. So that there could. There was, we think, yeah, a yeah. buildup of a warm surface water layer during the summertime. That probably um, here, okay, four thousand years ago, and so that's why the Sheldon is right here, is because we, we did find on the <laughs> bank we found uh, alewife. Oh, you did on the bank. Okay. So you know, it's always, is it going to be tomcod or alewife? You know, this kind of thing, or both, or whatever it's going to be, because it always surprised me. Sometimes I expect these things and they don't pan out. You know. But, but this, this right here is the biggest wetland on the entire peninsula. So, the, so, so it would be the logical source. Huh. So, so, uh, so the, when the tide was lower, the volume of water in the whole bay is different, and that geometry I of the see. bay Changes influences the tide. the tide. And really yeah. now, now they're at their most extreme at this low. In fact, I think if it, if it continued to get higher, the tides are are not going to increase. It's like I, I heard that oh, this, really? is, this is pretty much ideal, you know, and that's why you get those 30-foot Bay of Fundy tides. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it got if it got a lot deeper, uh, that would actually be reduced because really? it's, it's the precise. It's like a bathtub when you, you mm -hmm. when you get in slush water in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. If you do it at the right frequency, you can actually build up enough water yep. slosh to go over the side of the bathtub. Yep. That's what. That's how. That's a simple explanation that we understand from the geographer. So the things that are not known are, you know, was it, was it specifically the water temperature, the surface water temperature? Uh, was it that you actually had Gulf Stream uh, currents coming in here? So what we're doing, what Sky's doing for dissertation is specifically trying to look at the small fish to see whether we can identify uh, fish that shouldn't be here. Uh, Warm water this, species. This thing. Now unfortunately lots of fish are on both sides of the Cape. Uh, some very specific ones are not. You know, we do get, when you go down on the bank here, there's quite a bit of quahog. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no oyster, but that could be the nature of the bay. So, and quahog is not here now, but it's, according to John Rowe, it is in Frenchman's Bay, down lower. So, what it would be is, uh, it is a water temperature thing, but it's also specific to bays with, with, with regard to relic populations. Yeah. But it may be that as far as oxygen isotopes or something mm -hmm. like that, the quahog may still be the best bet. In terms of reconstructing terms of, temperature. Yeah, and temperature. having a little bit longer lifetime within the, than the soft shell clinks. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So, so there is a, uh, but the funny thing is that we've only gotten a piece of quahog out of this. 
very little, yet if you go out on the bank, you can see uh, the deepest levels of shell on his profiles are whole and large shell. And you can see that on the bank. Mostly and, quahog. And where you get that, you've got a fair bit of quahog in there. So, so we are expecting that. But this is kind of remarkable because so far this has been, we can't tell that we're in his back dirt. There's no layers, there's no backfill layers. But he was not screening, so depending on how he backfilled, you know, for all we know, this may be the uh, the stuff that he considered to be road fill. Yep. Uh, that would look. He describes it just like this. <laughs> you know, nails, pottery, uh, but stuff that was bulldozed off this road yeah. down onto the slope. And this road was and built. He may not have even gone through it, and he may have used it as backfill. That makes sense. What, this was the least pronounced. Pit, so we suspect it was the first one he backfilled, and then as he got later, he ran out of. He ran out of backfill. <laughs> These are small. There's so much swordfish compared to other species. We've got a couple pieces of probably a piece or two of cod dentary, um, but not an abundance of anything. Deer. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Julia. Now, now you, Harbor Mitchell and you looked at the waterside bone. The big, Harbor basically measured the swordfish stuff. Did, oh, yeah. did he look at the rest of the bone? Do you know, no. is it a, okay. Because we're gonna, we'll look at that eventually. That's at the Abbey. Yep. I was surprised to find out, I thought they got it. Do you know whether the rest of the material is at Harvard or at Berkeley? The rest of the cultural the, the, material? Yeah. I don't think it's at Harvard. And so you would, you would, you would probably don't know. have known that. I don't know. I sort of only assumed for some reason that it was at Berkeley and and, uh, uh, but the bone, apparently, according to Julia, never went to Berkeley. Somebody right. found it in their house or something like that. <laughs> it was, <clears throat> or <laughs> Roe shipped it back. It was in, you know, you just have to basically put up, uh, uh, put up some boards. Mm -hmm. And we could get another, maybe two meters, you know, before having to take up the road. There's a tremendous amount of diggable stuff left. Yeah, there's a lot here. And, and, you know, it, what we're doing now is, of course, trying to make sure we've got big enough samples. This is, everything's taking longer. Our plan was originally to take out this and this yeah. and to get four to six columns. And right now we're well into our first, we're going to be here next week. But, but I don't think, I don't know whether we're going to get there or not. So, so we may end up columns. taking four columns out ah. of here. And, and just waiting on it. Now the other thing is, how is how exciting is this as a future prospect? And the more exciting it gets, the uh, the more likely it is that we'll get back to it. Um, but we have to make sure we got big enough samples for Sky's pit. Sky and I will be down to talk to you in general about climate and possible scenarios with currents and whatever we can get out of this. We got. We have a nice book. Somebody out of the. It wasn't Woods Hole, but it was one of those. Did a nice book on comparative ecology between the Gulf of Maine and south of Cape Cod, and listed every species from invertebrates on up. You know. Holy cow! And the thing that surprised me a little bit was there weren't more fish species. Things like scup, for example, yeah. are. are uh, Cunner and totog and scup. Abundant south yeah. of the Cape, yeah. and then they become rare. Although uh, scup are called porgies. And Alice said that they've had porgies in the bay recently. She said that her daughter was out there, and the and the and the water started to boil, and it was squid. And and again, so it's it's like all these crazy things that are coming up here just the last couple of years, you know. Yeah, the yeah. Conference. Island Institute thing. Island yeah. Institute. Yeah, that's what it is. I know it. Well, this is the thing. If, <laughs> if they're, the funny thing is, if the if the swordfish are actually in Gulf water, a lot of the species go from Cape Cod down to down to uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But that's not Gulf water. That's the little triangle of water that's inside of the Gulf. Right. Right. If you're actually getting Gulf water coming in here, you would have a different set of species than the ones that are just south of the Cape Cod. So you know, and yet. It, Thus far, I had been thinking that thus far, when you look at the big species, there's not a lot of real obvious, the cod is still there in the right. early sites, but cod, 
cod are not big south of the Cape, but they occur. So it becomes a frequency thing, you know? And, and uh, so let me, let me show you our other yeah. of interest. I'm just going to go down in the middle. Do I suspect the woodland period then is more extensive, you know, as you would There's expect. There's a little brown one. Uh, it goes under the oak tree, doesn't it? Does that recall? Yep. It, it, well, it, right on the end of this thing, the, the shell just stops. Now this right here, that nail, that was all the swordfish that we oh wow we photographed coming down here. Now right here is the trench. Yeah. So that swordfish actually was coming out of the undug unit right on that corner. Oh shit. Okay. Now one of the things, look at all the whole shell. Yes. You know, and and th that's what he describes. So when we get down there, the nice thing is about columns, we'll be keeping it all. You know. So we'll have lots of. Uh, of samples. Now we we had Chris Sarkletsis was down a couple days ago and got here before us and he was poking him off and he said I think I got a big piece of sword sitting on the rock. So <laughs> I had I had left and everything and missed it and there was a there was a great big piece of sword right on the rock and then we looked around a little more watch this thing here. Yeah. Oh, look, at, look at this. Oh. Dear Astragalus. There you go. Laying out here in the... Could be somebody's... Could be archaeological. Likely. The what did you find, this Sky? Stuff, the preservation is, is good. Up in there. Very good. I mean, the, we, had, we had... We uh, had... Here. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the weathered out alewife vertebra are tough. Oh, in good, really? They're in good shape. Fantastic. So we're hopeful. You know, the best preservation I've ever seen there in point? Sorry. is no. Nevin. Yes. Oh, okay. really? Here's uh, This is what Sky found afterwards. Right here is a full oh, width of a sword. Oh, my God. There's a piece of sword. It's like this wide. Oh, jeez. <laughs> un, un, unused raw material, in other words. Well, it's 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 among the you know just these big chunks of sword. Now, the the cool thing is that uh, uh, this looks to me to be the moderately shell free. Yeah. Take yeah. picture from over here. If that's the case, then it looks like this is shell. Yeah. This is moderately shell free, which would put it as as the moorhead phase layer, which means it could be in C2. Now, if that's the case, this whole end has got midden under it. And we'll go back up and... Nice preserved chunk. It's a big preserved chunk that's a lot wider. That sounds like a lot of work for you. Well, that's not going to be my... That's not my... It's not in my... Uh, so, thing, that's right? pretty encouraging. <laughs> that is cool, Brian. It's now, really the interesting thing is, again, we found... We scoured this and found, I think, two flakes. Now, he says he found a lot of flaking debris only in the Moorhead phase level, and it was kineo. We found a kineo biphase in the back there, and a few kineo. But compared to what I'm we used to in workshops, yeah. this is low density, kind of, yeah. you know? We found so, it was in the yeah. back So putting it all that in. together, it was a uh, what little, is this it's a piece high density kind of, of swords but. way back from the stream in a remnant of the back end remnant. It, you know, you just put those contexts together and you say, is there enough preserved here? Workshop? Yeah, is it workshop? Is it uh, some other? Is it a dog yard discard? I, I don't know. I mean, you, you know me, yeah. I'm more into the, uh, you know, uh, is it a house floor with you know, sword for swords, lying. Because remember in Seabrook, I found a cache of swords. Yeah. Uh, right. Were they doing that kind of thing? You know, uh, <laughs> is this an opportunity? You know how uh, the best, the best uh, house floor that I've ever seen, donut ring, was one that David did, and it was up in uh, Passamaquoddy Bay, and it was an isolated donut back off the showman. Well, maybe. You know, if we're that far back, maybe we've got a kind of context like that. And it would it might be, again, thinking for the Moorhead phase, 
and wishfully thinking, so you're trying to figure out what inspires you to do what. Um, you might have, uh, you know, either architectural or activity patterns that are uh, are are not are going to be unique or going to be uh, at least contrasting with them. Remember, this site produced no bifaces and five slate points. You know, it's just it's just different. And what are the reasons that is different? And, and what kind of specialized activities might you? So there's your soil. Yeah, you've got, a, you've got a you've got a subsoil, and then look at right there, and then boom, yep. and then right over here, absolutely nothing. Now what you're doing is you're going up onto a, I think, this is starting up on the old till, sloping up that way, old rise, and they yep. were just down here on the edge. Yep. Now according to John Rowe's map, the the shellman goes up on the till on the opposite side of the road and I don't know what to think of that you know I, I I don't think that I think a lot of that's going to be woodland if it's there at all now yeah that um, makes sense. but but I didn't we didn't know about this and this is pretty good that evidence. is a fantastic find they have so a whole we had, sword coming out of the we're going to probably take that out yeah. and we'll treat it like an excavation you know yeah and see if we can get a profile See if it's really below the shell or not. You God, know. Brian, this is fabulous. Can oh, I get man. a close-up picture of that? Yeah, I guess so. 